welcome back to another episode of Down Memory Lane. This episode is brought to you by our good friends at Speed Cult. Go visit them at the Rust Belt Market in Detroit. And uh, with me today I have a special guest. Uh, he's been with us for a long time here at Shorts Brewing Company. Has seen uh, many tides change, ebb and flow, and is here to tell us uh, a special story. So I'm going to go ahead and hand the mic over to him right now. Well, thank you, Joe. Hello. My name is John Wojtovich. I work in the Beer Liberation Department, and uh, this trip down memory lane is about Hopstash. That I think first came out in 2010, I believe. Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. I don't know if we bottled it that year or if we actually bottled it. I think we bottled it in 2011. But uh, yeah, it was uh, the beer that you allowed uh, myself to pitch, if you will. And it was originally brewed as the wedding beer for my wedding. This fascination with grapefruit infused IPAs. I think that we were uh, on the cusp of that whole development. Well, yeah, I mean, the first batch of Hopstash was brewed in, I think the second batch was in 2010. The first batch might have actually been in 2009. And uh, I remember because uh, I was particularly in love with Amarillo and Simcoe hops at the time. Is uh, that what we use in here? Uh, we use the both, but there's a third. Um, the Amarillo from Stellar Ale, and uh, then the uh, Simcoe from Ang Frank or Controversial. Uh, there was a new hop that came about, and I think it was 2009, 2010, with the Citra hop. And the name uh, pretty much implies it all. So uh, we, I think we brewed a few beers with that, the first batch of prolonged enjoyment, and uh, needless to say, fell head over heels with that particular hop variety as well. So obviously I like the tropical fruit, citrusy, uh, you know, more floral flavors as opposed to some of the, the pioneer qualities that you can get in American hops. So uh, the, the technical um, stats of this beer, mm -hmm. ABV, a producer, can we pull up those fast facts? Looks like she's ready for uh, us. Yep, it is 6.75% ABV. <laughs> Come on, 6.5? 8, 85 IBU. Is it 7? Well, it's in the ballpark. <laughs> I've been doing this for a while. Real you close. hit that right down the third base line. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Simcoe, Amarillo, Citra, uh, right away thought that would be an amazing combination. I think we dabbled with Amarillo and Simcoe in a beer before with Goodfeller. Yeah. And then Citra was just like the new kid on the block, and of course everybody was clamoring to get their hands on it. And it, it, I think Citra actually kind of led the way to these even like juicier and fruitier and even more over the top hop varieties we have now, like Mosaic. Spawn the birth of all these citrus Seriously. IPAs. Seriously, yeah. and Citra's kind of uh, you know yeah, yesterday's news now because everybody wants the Mosaics and the Galaxy and well, the hops that nobody's heard of yet. Right, right, but you can't get enough of. Them. So. Um, had those three hops, and it would be very uh, fruit forward, great fruit forward, and then uh, yeah, just we were, you, we, you set an early tone in the company of uh, experimentation, embracing creative, and using non-traditional brewing ingredients. So pretty much any time I thought of an idea or pitched an idea for beer, there was a non-traditional element to it because, I mean, like I said, you set the stage, and it was like, all right, if it's going to be. A, a worthwhile idea, uh, we should probably have something else in there, and Grapefruit Zest just sounded great. I mean, a lot of people just assume, like, I think that this was your beer, or this was taken from, like, your uh, email handle you had when you went on sabbatical, but, uh, yeah, uh, the, the beer was originally produced for my wedding. This was uh, back at a time, and we still, to this day, uh, whenever somebody gets married, we, we honor the, tradi the tradition of brewing them their own beer. Uh, yeah, Emily, you will get We've yours. We've done, like, 12 now. Like, oh, easily, easily. Yeah. Um, employees that are still with the company, some that have come and gone, but uh, the beer recipes, I, I think the last time we added it up, it was something like 12. Um, the most recent one was uh, Pure Magic for Zach Mendelssohn, who just got married this last uh, fall. But, um, so yeah, I think at that point you had done Ale of Reverend, and I, think, I can't remember, Tony, if he brewed a beer or, because he eloped, so I don't think he did, but I just thought the idea of having your own beer at your wedding and the fact that you work for a brewery and could possibly have that, was just incredible, and uh, you know, Tony humored me. Uh, you gave the A OK, and we brewed that uh, original recipe. And at the time, we just called it Wedding Beer. Um, so how did it uh, how did it merge with uh, the Dirty Thirty? Mustache? Yeah, yeah. Well, if you remember, I don't remember this was... anything after uh, like three months. <laughs> well, as some people may remember, who who can look back on the 2007 to 2010 years. Um, we kind of had this ongoing joke at the brewery surrounding mustaches, and in particular mustaches and short shorts. 
and how the combination of a good mustache and a short short actually Deputy uh, Dangle approach. made for a pretty hyster hysterical uh, a combination. It's so Boja's uh, Halloween costume uh, every Halloween. Right. Just different <laughs> versions. Right. Right, so there was always short shorts, there was always mustaches. Eventually you got in on it because you were already already doing uh, Kip at that point in time. Right, so, but I never did my real mustache with Kip until uh, just last year. Really? Even when you were wrestler Kip? Yeah. I thought that was a real deal. Yeah. yeah. It's good, good acting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> good makeup. Um, so yeah, we had that thing going for a few years where there was always this like ongoing joke of uh, the comical nature that sometimes mustaches can present. Uh, so when the time came to finally move away from the pub, you know, move out of living upstairs and, and get uh, a home. You had the largest dust money I'd ever seen <laughs> moving you out of that apartment. <laughs> pub, 50% dust, 50% dog hair. Oh my god. 100% awesome. I feel dirty right now thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, you showed up with like four dudes and we're like, all right, grab all this stuff and throw it in the trailer. No, I was always like, can you guys just help me grab a couple things real quick? And we're like, oh, we're in for the long haul. We're moving everything. Okay. Cool. I was like, wait, that's not my couch. That's not my dresser. You were like, throw it in. Yep, you get it now. Get it all out of there. So we moved me out of, out of the pub. We're out of upstairs of the pub. And uh, never had a housewarming party. And, and when we finally decided to have like a housewarming party, it fell right around the time of my 30th birthday. So we were like, all right, well, well let's, you know, being the uh, self-indulgent guy that I was, I was like, I'm going to throw myself a party. Uh, we'll kind of combine it as a, a 30th birthday party and a housewarming party, but, you know, we couldn't just have a 30th birthday party, so we came up with the concept of the Dirty 30 Mustache Party and Pig Roast. Uh, pig Roast was the element for, like, the house, you know, warming aspect. People got to eat. Yeah, and then the mustaches was like, well, if we're all going to sit around and get shitty, we might as well be laughing at each other, so. Um, so many good mustaches. Oh, lots of great mustaches. Um, a lot of cheater mustaches, too. There were, uh, like, the handlebar beard things, and, like, you know, people weren't willing to commit. Yeah. I was kind of disappointed in a few, Tony in particular. This looked pretty good, though, still. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, they all looked great, but it was like, come on. There's no, yeah. If it should have set limits. If it's attached to, your, uh, to here, it's not yeah. technically a mustache. No, it's just a really weird beard. <laughs> so, uh... The big sideburn. So, being the individual that you were, and uh, never doing anything half-ass, um, I think the invites went out in probably, you know, birthday was in April, so the invites went out probably in like uh, late February. Because I remember you committed for like a month and a half, two months. No, I think it took longer than that. It's like two months. So, either way, the concept of the party got out, we threw it out there, people started committing right away, and I remember your response was, alright, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to start growing my mustache now. And. Uh, oh, yeah. This was 2010, so like we had like expansion meetings for the plant. They're oh, yeah. meeting with bankers. <laughs> I remember going into yeah. bank meetings uh, with my Pedro Dirtlip <laughs> mustache. Yeah. Trying to get financing for the production. Studio. Yeah, yeah. So you look like an 18-year-old kid trying to look Same old enough to buy beer. <laughs> it was really pathetic. Yeah. So you know, needless to say, a little bit of uh, I don't want to say it was animosity. But uh, you started uh, hinting that, like, you better appreciate this. <laughs> yeah, it was also mostly because uh, Leah would touch me. Yes. And then um, Simon had just been born. Yeah. So all of my uh, first dad pictures were with the really best bad. of the worst mustaches. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the bottle label's actually really generous, I think. I, I, I don't know. I mean, we'll look at the picture here in a minute. But um, <laughs> so. So because of all that, because of the hell you put your, your wife and uh, business partners through uh, just to get into the spirit of the birthday party, um, the next day, I mean, you want to tell this, I don't know why you came up with this idea. But. So, yeah, my in-laws live across the street from Woj's house, so it allowed us to uh, imbibe throughout the evening, and um, before I went to bed, I... Uh, to the bathroom and I took a picture of myself before I shaved my mustache and that's basically what the label is, is a picture of <laughs> <laughs> It's in the Oh yeah, of course. Just catching the a little glare. There yeah. we go. Thanks. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. So anyway. So because it was also Woj's birthday, I was like, what better gift could anyone possibly get? And Joe Short's very first mustache. Inaugural stash, yeah. And so I put it in an envelope, 
They put it in another envelope, and there's probably a letter in there. There might something, be. Something nice written. Yeah, yeah, you know, honestly, it's... Uh, Have you ever opened it? No, no, it's the most disgusting gift I've ever received, well, and I've never opened first. it. Might as well, right? No time like I the think present. there's another envelope in there. Oh, there is. No time like the present to receive a, a present of the actual photo. <laughs> April 3rd, 2010, dated my birthday. Okay, there you go. It's looking pretty good. I don't know if it's because it's up close. You know, I, th I thought Fritz was being a little generous on the label art, but uh, it's, it's, it's I superimposed Cody's lid. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, contents, mustache, belonging to Joe Short, shaved off April 4th, so the next day, okay. uh, first ever mustache. A three month invested gift. Yeah. That yeah. ruined my life for three months. I still have it, don't I? <laughs> True. The minute you asked with, if I had it, I pulled so it out. Anyway, right for you. So and I, and anyway, anyway, Welch got my first mustache. Mm -hmm. um, it gave me the confidence to grow. Uh, you know what the mustache everybody's used to seeing. Oh yeah, I pretty much. That was. But like, seeing how I gave you my first mustache, I think that it's also uh, time for me to give you another first. Oh no. Which is my um, first Gomez hair. Oh god. That I ever dyed my hair. The first Gomez All hair. Alright. The weird black color Shaved hair. Shaved not had. less than 90 minutes ago. <laughs> I will cherish this forever. <laughs> so we didn't stuff finish. it in the bag. I will, actually, I will. You know, I'm going to auction that stuff off someday. It's going to be my nest egg. <laughs> Happy 30th, Woj. Thank you. Cheers, cheers. Uh, How old are you now? I'm uh, 36. And uh, actually, uh, this this is closer to my ten year uh, oh. anniversary of short. So there we go. I, I've upgraded to much larger hair follicles, meaning I've, I've you know improving my status. The here. Gomez Adams <laughs> black hair. Dye. That's thoroughly disgusting. Thank you. It's clean. Um. So anyway, so the beer I think at this point still really didn't have a name, but. Uh, I, I want to say it was, if this would have been, if this was spring of 2010, then by February of 2011, we were planning... Smell juicy. Doesn't it? Oh, man, it's, it still tastes just as good. Um, but by February of 2011, we were getting ready for another EDF. So it would have had to have been maybe in October, November. You, I think you were, you're taking a break, and you and Leah, I think, went somewhere. So this would have been October, November of 2010. I want to say maybe Montana or something, yeah. and uh, we needed to get the EBF lineup going. So this was back when we shared like the one big office space, and uh, Tony was downstairs, and we started hammering out some of the beers uh, to submit. And I think this was like the first year we didn't do it with your approval. You know, we just had to get some stuff locked in, and the discussion of this grapefruit IPA came up. So at that point, which uh, is birthday. Uh, Which is wedding, wedding beer. beer. Wedding beer. Uh, I don't, and again, I can't remember if this was at the birthday or not. I don't think it would have been. But, uh, the mustache. Mm -hmm. But I did get married in the, uh, on Labor Day of 2010, so we had to brew another batch, so that batch probably got used for UBS. And, and labeled. Mm -hmm. Hopstash, labeled Hopstash. Was that you or Tony? No, that was me. Um, again, playing on the whole hilarity of the stash. Uh, I think we just started calling it around that time, and then when we needed Fritz to come up with a sign. Send the picture. Yeah, yeah, that's all we did. We just scanned the photo, told them what we wanted, and uh, really the only reason why we needed label art was for EBF, for our booth. Um, never thought this would be a 12 ounce beer. It hasn't changed in years. It hasn't changed, hasn't changed. And uh, yeah, it, uh, it's pretty hysterical because we were just coming up with, you know, a corrugated sign to put up at our booth at EBF. So we were laughing, and I was like, "Oh, here we got to use this. I have the I have the perfect image to use." And so we did all that while you were gone. And then I, I think the first bottle batch was later in 2011 because the beer started to take on its own moments. I tell you, yeah, man. Now I get to add to the envelope. And that, my friends, is the story of Hopstash. That's that. And so 7.8 percent ABV, hmm. 80 IBUs. No, 6.7. 85 IBUs. There you, have it. there you have it. And I mean, honestly, you might be responsible for mustache being my favorite. I don't know. Well, as long as Leah likes it, it's really all the problems. So, cheers, my friend. Cheers. To Hopstash in your 10 years. Ah, it's juicy. Yeah, but it's happy. It's refreshing. There's no byline for this beer. Unbelievable. Next year's goal. Up with a byline for Hopstash. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers.